All right, uh, welcome to Mount Carmel Bible Church. Good morning. I'm Pastor Richard, and this is Easter Sunday. So, again, for those of you who wonder why I'm saying that again, is because of the, the recording <coughs> we put on the internet. So when they hear this or watch this at home or wherever they're going to watch it, they'll know that they missed out on Easter Sunday. So, um, Again, we had a lot of people missing. We've gone over quite a few things in the past few weeks about the Easter, uh, the few days before Easter and into today, where we talked about the darker side of the Easter story, uh, where, yeah, they're, they're flying around, where uh, the people that were so, in, in, so into the sin of the world that they couldn't let go of their power, let go of their positions, to accept Jesus as their Savior. And because of that, they were the ones who falsely accused, arrested, and caused the crucif crucifixion of our Lord. We also talked about the, uh, the several miracles that happened around the time of his death. We talked about the... Uh, darkening of the skies from noon to three. We talked about the earthquake at his death, the, uh, the ripping of the, of the shroud in the uh, temple. We talked about the, the earthquake causing the rocks to break. Earthquakes don't usually do that. We talked about the opening of the other, temp of the other tombs and the rising of the saints uh, after Jesus rose. Those are things that got the attention of many people that were in the area at the time. And several people even, even proclaimed that, yes, this was the Son of God. So because of those miracles, it reached others. Well, today we want to talk a little bit about a different part of that miracle. When Jesus finally gave himself to the Lord just before he did give up his spirit and to death. Jesus cried out from the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And many people don't get where that's coming from. This is a reference to an Old Testament verse, Psalm 22. And at the time that Jesus said that, most people knew what he was talking about. They would go to the synagogues, they would go and hear and read the, the psalms, and they would be singing the psalms. So, we don't sing them today, we don't memorize everything today, but at the time, they didn't have books, they had scrolls at, at the uh, synagogues, at the temple, where they would read from and study from. That's how most of them learned to read, that's how most of them learned to write was at the synagogues. So most people knew this reference. So I thought it was important that we go over the reference ourselves today. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? From the wor word, from the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry by day, by you do not answer, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted. They trusted. And you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver them. Let him rescue him. 
for he delights in him. Let's think about that part of it right now. This was written way before the crucifixion. And this is summing up what is going on with Jesus at the time. The people were around him, mocking him, making fun of him, saying, if, if you're the son of God, why doesn't he come and rescue you? It goes on. Yet you are he who took, from, who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breast. On you was I cast from my birth. And from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. And there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a raving and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, or potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaw. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me, a company of evildoers encircle me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all of my bones. They share, they stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothes they cast lots. All this is happening to him at the moment. And all of this was written hundreds of years before. With accuracy, this screams to all those who know these verses that are paying attention that this is the Son of God. But there's more. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you, all you offspring of Jacob, glorify him and stand in awe of him. All you offspring of Israel. For he is not despised or abhorred. The affliction of the afflicted, and he is not hidden his face from him but has heard when he cries to him from you come my praise in the greatest congregation my vow I will perform before those who fear him the conflict conflicted shall eat and be satisfied those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the end of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord, and he rules 
all the nations. Very comforting to the Lord here. And it's a reminder that if you put your faith and trust and love in the Lord, He will be there for you. And it goes on, all the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before Him shall bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity, uh, the Posteritely shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generations. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to the people yet unborn that he has done it. It is done. The Lord finished his thoughts before he passed on. When he gave up his spirit, all of the prophets, all of the prophecies were fulfilled. This was written hundreds of years before his crucifixion. And yet you can see from them casting lots, from them mocking him, circling him, from his piercings, his hands and feet, all of that was foretold years before it happened. What was completed? Jesus did so many things in a short time. He started his ministry less around three years before his crucifixion because he turned 30. And Jewish law, you couldn't be a holy uh, preacher until the age of 30. That's why there's not a whole lot written about what he did or what he said prior to that because it wouldn't have been taken much, uh, much to heart. He's not 30. He's not spiritually mature enough to be a pastor. Now, that doesn't mean everybody that's 30 is spiritually mature enough to be a pastor. I certainly am not. <laughs> but that was the mark at the time. That was the time frame that you could become a pastor. And he was taken very seriously by so many people. He had hundreds of followers. Just a week ago, Palm Sunday, when he came into Jerusalem, they treated him as a king. They laid down the palm branches and, and his feet and clothes and, and they, they praised and, and worshipped God and thought, this is it, he's coming to save us. He's the Messiah. He's going to kick out Rome and set up his kingdom here on earth. He got it partially right. And then a week later, less than a week later, he was arrested, tried, and murdered. Not only was he murdered, he was mocked. People were making fun of him. People were enjoying the crucifixion. He went from being loved by all to being murdered for all. Jesus' victory over death is the biggest part of the story. Well, depending on your point of view, this is one of the biggest parts. Matthew 12, 40, um, he records, For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The key phrase is the heart of the earth. Ephesians 1, 20-23, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand 
in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the, in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church. which is his body and fullness of him who fills all in all. What that's saying is when God pulled Jesus from death, he gave him the power over death. He gave him the power over everything and over our church. Because we're all all Christians are members and part of his church. doesn't matter if you're from a church down the road or across the country or on the other side of the world. If you're a Christian, you belong to his church. And we are a part of that. He, at this point, made it so that Gentiles as well as Jews could go to heaven. which I personally am very grateful for. Mm -hmm. But the main change that I wanted to talk about was to make it, this made, the, this made it clear to me. Uh, when Jesus went to Shalom, which is the Hebrew Old Testament uh, word, or Hades, the Greek New Testament word, where all the dead were waiting, before his resurrection, when you died, you went to this place. It wasn't a place of torture. It wasn't a place of delight. It was just a place. When he took power over that place, uh, it, was, it was referred to, as we mentioned earlier, the heart of the earth, where everyone was waiting. He then took the saints with him when he left. So now, Christians don't have to go and wait anymore. We can go right to heaven. When we pass, there's no waiting. There's no standing in line. You're going to be standing in line here in a couple days. There's no getting a ticket and waiting and waiting and waiting. There's no cutting in line because there's no line. When we pass on, we go right there. And I think that's one of the more powerful statements to remember this time of year. He took power over everything. He is now fully glorified and fully entrusted with us. And everything we learn about God, everything we learn about Jesus, all comes down to this moment when he rose, when the tomb was laid empty, when he scared those poor women walking home. He's risen. He is all powerful. He is glorified. And because of that, our sins are paid for. We are glorified. Because of that, we can go and be with him in heaven when he's ready for us. And that's the most amazing thing I can think of. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Jen? The fur? Oh, <laughs> Lord, we come to you after having a wonderful service that explains some of the things that you yourself went through as you uh, hung on that cross at that last very hour. We thank you for shedding your blood so that we might be free. We thank you for freeing the saints so that we might not have to go to a purgatory so we can go straight to you um, when that time comes, Lord. 
We thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives right now and in the lives of others and by allowing us to be the hand and feet of your son. Uh, thank you, Lord. Please watch over everyone as they go out today and keep them wrapped in your arms until they come back safe. Um, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah.